very rusty old Joe Clark. I haven't played this for, for ages. Um, my uh, handwork is not very good, um, but I promised I'd do a little um, tutorial on this one. And, uh, and the last one I did was on sort of double thumbing to kind of get this in, um, in the right place for this. Um, this is a little bit more of an advanced um, tutorial I guess and I'm not going to be able to go through every single little thing I do um, it's it's just not going to be possible to explain everything but I'll try and kind of um, give you an idea and then you can just play around with it and add in your own bits and, and have a practice and stuff um, there's loads of kind of different ways to play it um, I guess this is like the fanciest tune I play when I play it like that, although that wasn't very good. Um, but um, I was going too fast, my fingers weren't working. But you know, I don't do a lot of tunes. I don't do a lot of picking out individual kind of like fancy notes like that um, very much. I'm a songwriter, and you know, I use the banjo to to play you know more simple stuff really that suits songs. Um, Whereas this is obviously like a you know a fiddle tune and a lot of players will be playing it kind of note for note and stuff and, and I was trying to put as much as I could in there. Um, but I just like to give it a bit of flavour like anything that I play. Um, so I'll try and kind of um, show you a few things that I do that you can maybe have a go at, see how you get on. Um, like I said, with the other tutorial uh, that I just put up was the double thumbing. So if you're not familiar with double thumbing, striking and then filling it in with the thumb, uh, you need to really do that tutorial first and get kind of a bit familiar with that to do the kind of bit that I'm going to show you now. Um, so yeah, uh, you'll probably be able to work out the kind of melody for yourself. It's all along that first string to begin with. If you play the string open and then kind of climb up to the second fret and the third fret back to the second and open, it's like a climb up and down. Do, 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 do. Do, do. then you go to the second string, fret it at the first and then open. So that's your main melody. Okay. But um, as we did in that last shortening bread uh, little tutorial on double thumbing, I try, don't always succeed, but I try and put a thumb in between those notes because you could just play them singly and then do a strum that would work um, but if you put a thumb in between each one it sounds really cool because it sounds like going a lot faster so that sounds really nice so if you can try and kind of put that double thumb in there uh, that's uh, a really good thing to kind of add into this tune and what I do is to make it a bit more syncopated a little bit more interesting sounding and um, I kind of hammer on as well so rather than it being do 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 which is quite robotic um, I kind of hammer into it and then I do a pull off on the third so it gives it a kind of can you hear that difference rather than do, do, hang on do, 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 do. very very even which is cool 
that's kind of how the tune goes if you want to keep it really even. But I kind of like the... So I, I would add those little... Totally up to you. And then the next bit, you do that first little bit again. And then a lot of people stay on the G, so just keep that sort of open string and keep it in your open G chords, that's cool, so that'd sound like but the fiddler that I learnt this off of and that I play with sometimes goes to an F there um, so it's kind of and I really like it, I like the sound of it with the F in, the, in, the, in the, uh, that bar so I will always go to the F. Um, because I try, I try and play this quite fast, um, I do the cheating F, I do the three fingered F. So um, I don't kind of bring my ring finger across and do the whole four fingered one. I sort of do the cheating one because um, you don't really need the full chord. It goes, it goes quite briefly. You only really need those three strings. <laughs> So I'd just do two strums there. And then you repeat that first bit. So you, you, you know, you're almost through the, uh, the A part. And then to finish it off, it kind of goes back to that F again. Um, but I cheat again here. I don't do the full F. I do the sort of, um, if you, it's a bit hard, if you imagine that you're in the full F, you can see that your third and fourth string, so the third and the bass string, are on fret two and fret three, okay? So rather than doing an F shape, I bring my index finger over to that third string, second fret, and then my middle finger to the fourth string on the third fret so I just hold down those two notes um, and it kind of makes quite a discordant sound but it, it sort of works because I concentrate on those bassy strings um, and I would kind of do a I do a little slide on that bass string into it so it's like a and again you could hammer into it you can pick out those you can pick out the individual notes there's you know you, there's so many variations um but that's the how it kind of finishes after your second so putting that all together That's how I would generally play that part, uh, give or take, you know, a couple of hammer-ons or pull-offs or whatever, get a feel for that. Um, just do it really slowly to start with and if you want to keep it even rather than putting that syncopation in, that's cool because the syncopation is a little bit tricky. Um, so it might be that you're going, <laughs> did it automatically, ah, I find it really hard to not do it. trying to get that double thumb in on that section um, or like I say you can do it a little bit more syncopated putting that kind of okay so it's pretty much the same it's just the timing and the kind of hammering into things um, so it makes it slightly more on the offbeat, uh, that's all. So that's the first section. And then in the second section, um, dun, 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 I, I like to put a couple of slides in this. So you're starting in G, 
So again, you can keep it really simple if you wanted and just do, um, you know, just do a strum on G. That's literally with the chords. So remember, when you're playing anything, as I always say, you can come back to the chords and your basic strum and you can sing along and you'll still have the song and the tune sounding nice, okay? So you don't have to put any of the fiddly bits in. If you're getting a bit lost, come back to the basics. Um, but because you're in a G, you can, if you want, put like little slides and stuff in. So I would go... So a couple of those nice G slides, the bass string up to the fifth fret and then the third string up to the fourth fret you know so there are a couple of the G slides we've put in other things bom, 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 bom. but it's quite it's quite pacey this you know it's like a sort of quick slide I'm not sort of emphasizing every note of that slide it's just more of a kind of brush along um, that's kind of in the first section um, and I'd probably try and double thumb that again so first string um, thumb on the fifth da, 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 da. so just open first fret your second on the first one to begin with and then open the second okay da, da, da. so all together that's a slide and a slide and a da, da, da. Strum to finish it off, and then the slides again da, 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 into your F. And I might try and grab a full F this time, um, or you could do the cheating one again. I might do the cheating one actually, <laughs> depends what mood I'm in. Um, so you can go up to your F and then. So it just repeats and then it finishes like the first one. You can do that little slide on the bass, cheating F, that little discordant kind of two fingered F. Um, I mean, I'll probably get people like complaining about this and saying that it's wrong. Uh, I don't care, <laughs> just telling you how I play it and I think it sounds all right. Um, you know, quite like. I quite like that sort of half a chord. Um, I've always played it like that. Um, you can put a full F in though, if you feel the need. Um, so that's the second part. So you've got the slide, slide, da, 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 da. slide, slide into the F, slide, slide, da, 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 da. slide, two finger F, da, da, da. okay, slide, slide. So there are your two parts. you can kind of put in when you're trying to play it more as a instrumental or a tune but obviously you know if you want to sing it there's whole loads of different verses I don't know all the verses there's like I'm sure there's hundreds if you look up all the different old folk sites um but yeah things like uh what did I sing old Joe Clark old Joe Clark's a fine old man tell you the reason why keeps good liquor in his house with all rocking by now you know, you don't even have to put in that melody because you're going to sing it, you know, so sometimes you might, you might just keep it to the chorus. Oh, the boss man, oh man, tell you the reason why. He keeps the liquor in his house, but all rock and ride. You know, 
you might just put a little bit, bit of it in just to give a hint, you know. Hold your cards, final man, tell you the reason why. Keeps the liquor in his house, good old rock and ride. You know, and I'm just sort of like hinting at what I do, but I'm not putting all the fiddly bits in and all the double thumbing and stuff. Um, so this is, you know, where you get to just play around. Um, Try not to, you know, get bogged down following the tab and listen to it, you know, just try and you, you've got that basic melody, you can work out where those notes are and then, you know, once you know where those notes are, you can decide kind of how many of them you want to put in or, you know, if you want to syncopate them a little bit or you want to put an extra little flourish in there, you know, that's something you can play around with. Um, so there's, you know, if you take it up the neck, um, that that second part where it goes do 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 do, you could you could bring that up on this first string to make a higher uh, melody. So you could go slide up into that fifth a D, 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 D. and you're gonna go to your ninth. Remember it, it's G, so those same frets that we always use. You know the fifth, the ninth, the twelfth. You know, they're going to be, whoops, you know, they're going to be in that scale, all those handy uh, frets that we've used before. So go up to, go up to the fifth, then to the ninth, twelfth, tenth, ninth. That's going to give you the melody, isn't it? And you can double thumb again. It's a bit tricky. And then, so that's back to the fifth and the ninth. And then, of course, you've got your F bar there, haven't you, at your tenth. So your F chord can be there. Or if you don't like playing the F, you know, you could keep it on a G chord at two up. I really like putting the Fs in. So, dun 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 ah, dun 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 It's a little bit trickier to finish it off on this string. Bum, bum, bum. You go back to your fifth. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Da. So I actually come out of the pattern a little bit if I was playing it there uh, just to finish it off. Bum, bum, bum. So that bit's easy. One and uh, then you go up to your seventh fret to get that note. Da, da, da. Can't break it down, do it slow. Yeah. So I go uh, first string, seventh, then I do a thumb to put the melody note in because the drone string is actually giving us the melody note we want there. And then I come to that second string on the sixth fret and then either your thumb or going back to your fifth on your first string either one is going to give you that note to finish off bum, 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 bum. so i guess this is where a lot of people would argue that drop thumb is um what you should do because if you do the drop thumb you can bring it onto different strings and there's probably a way to do that little da -da -dun -dun with a drop thumb but you don't really need to um, if you can work out what you're doing with your middle finger. Um, I, I've always got around it without using drop thumb. But again, this is you know for you to experiment with. So you might decide that you want to put it in there. Um, I would just go. <laughs> and just practice that. Bum, bum, bum. it off you don't need to put that in at all but that's just if you wanted to come up on you know the higher notes up the neck it does sound quite nice yeah and then you can go back into your
bass that I do as I play, uh, some people might call it sloppy. Hey, never mind. Um, but when I'm doing the double thumbing, I'm not always necessarily just hitting a single string. My fingers might catch a bit of other strings, you know. Um, you know, it's not always that clean. I don't care, to be honest. Do you know what I mean? Like, I enjoy it and I just enjoy playing it. And, um, you know, I'm not entering a banjo competition. So I think that's what you've got to always remember um, with your playing. You know, you're doing this, hopefully, to enjoy yourself and to get a kick out of it, you know, and to get in the groove with something. Um, and if that means you have to sacrifice a little bit of, you know, perfect technique, then to me, that's what you should do but that's just me um but you know i'm not going to get obsessed about not hitting every note cleanly and, and things like that you know okay i wish i was a better player but i enjoy what i do and i don't you know play to play old tunes to be fair i play to write my own stuff um this is just a happy kind of byproduct um but i'm just hoping you guys get um just get a little bit of something out of it um you know the fact that it is for enjoyment and so don't beat yourself up if you can't quite get the fiddly bits leave them out just play the chord you know as long as you're keeping it in time and you're trying to keep that rhythm going and you're enjoying what you're doing because you can sing along over the top because you're not making it too complicated brilliant you want to work on the complicated bit great set some time aside work on the fiddly stuff and try and throw that in in between some of the more simple singing verses and choruses and stuff um but yeah just have fun with it basically just have fun with it um i hope that gives you a little bit of uh, a starting point and uh, i'm sure you know you'll find lots of different ways to play it and and people will teach it in different ways but i think this way gives it a good groove you've got a bit of practice of double thumbing you, you put in more melody notes in uh, than I usually do certainly um you know so it's got it's got a little bit of everything in it and uh, yeah I think it's good practice for you so have a go let me know how you get on um do me a favor if you can subscribe to my banjo gem channel as well that would be fabulous um and to keep up to date with everything I'm up to please um give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram and the usual places Spotify and stuff um yeah see you soon thanks guys